Hello, it's Eugenie, and I'm back for another episode of Technique with Eugenie. So far, we've done vibrato and upbow staccato, so today we're going to do shifting. And actually, I'm going to break it into two parts. So we'll have shifting part one today, and then next Sunday will be shifting part two, because there are two types of shifting, so I thought it would be easier to break each shift into a different video. So today's video will be on type 1 shifting, which is a kind of methodical shifting. So that's what we'll be learning today. So let's get into it. Um, so I'm going to teach you about the first type, which is more methodical. So what I mean by this is that we use a kind of pivot note to guide us to find the right note because it's really important in shifting that we're the whole point of shifting is that we're shifting to a new note for example let's say we're doing it on the e string for example we're shifting from a low f sharp on the e string to an octave higher f sharp like this then we need to have a method of how we're going to get the note correctly. And it's the same if you want to go for an F sharp to an E, so. Like that. So, that's what I'm going to teach you. So basically, what I mean by a pivot note is it's a help, helping note to help you find the note. So for example, if we're going to do the F sharp to F sharp on the E string again, we, instead of just trying to find the note and just getting lost if we want to go from a first finger to the fourth finger, which is usually what we do for an octave. So if we want to find that, we can't just mindlessly not know where we're going. Because what's really important in shifting is that we have to know where, where we're going and where we're shifting to, otherwise we won't hit the note. And there's nothing more annoying when you're in a really good part of a piece and there's a really good um, beautiful shift and then you miss it. It's not, it just doesn't feel good. So, learning how to do this is very beneficial. So basically, the, the pivot note in this case that we'll use is if we're going from first finger F sharp to a fourth finger F sharp, what we're going to do is now the high F sharp with the fourth finger is in um, fifth position. So in fifth position, you know, when we have first position is second is and then so on. So for example, in fifth position, we put our first finger on the C sharp. And then this this is the note that we're trying to shift to from the low F, the octave. So, the pivot note in this case is the C sharp. Basically, this pivot note, we want to shift to the first, the first finger first because it's the first um, note in the new position that we're shifting to. We're shifting from first position to fifth position and then that's our note there. So basically this pivot note is just separating um, and showing us that which position we're going into. So because it, we're using the first finger to slide um, up like so and you can play when you're practicing, you can play these notes. And then another good thing that I do, I practice this shift alone um, about five times, um, making sure each time is perfectly in tune because you have to shift to the right note and the exact right tune. Like so. And another important part in shifting is that when you come to do the shift, you can't keep your um, hand position the same as how it would be when you're playing down here. So you have to move your 
with the help of your forearm and your elbow and your hand, you kind of, if you can see there, I'm turning just not too much, just um, I'm moving my elbow so um, my fingers, especially the fourth finger, is able to reach the new note without having to stretch because if your um, arm is still here you won't really be able to reach it as well and then you won't be able to do a comfortable vibrato either because your arm and elbow is where is in a position where you would is not in a position that you can comfortably play up here. Um, I'll demonstrate it to you again I'll go a bit back back this time so you can see my whole arm moving so so you even when as soon as you start as soon as you've played the first note you should try and start shifting so you shouldn't wait too much so if it's you should be moving your elbow as soon as you finish the first note so And then another thing as extra, because we found the pivot note now, which is the C-sharp, so pivot note in the new position, fifth position. And then after we've practiced this shift five times... Okay, so after you've practiced that about five times or more if you want, we found the pivot note, so we're going to practice um, shifting to the second finger in the new position, which is a D, so so that's the pivot note, so we want to try to get now shift to the second note in the new position, which is a D so now we want to try to shift straight to the D, but we still want to use the first finger pivot note because we're shifting with the first finger so we're shifting, we're shifting with the first finger, but then we want to get shift to the second finger. So, so if you can hear, I am still pressing the C sharp. So, like that, and then after that, you want to try to get to the. You want to try to shift to the third note in the new position, which is an E, so... So, by using this... By using the first pivot note, it's really helpful because um, it seems more straightforward when you shift using the finger that you've already started with in this type of shifting because it helps you find where you're trying to shift to um, and then the final step after you've practiced those three um, a few times the three shifting to these three different notes then you shift to the note that you've been aiming for which is the top F sharp which is the fourth finger so we're still using the pivot notes practicing shifting to the other three thing the other two fingers um, the second finger and the third finger is so you can between between the pivot note and the and the actual note you're trying to shift to um, you will be able to find it much easier so by practicing for example, you can see that it's right next to it, so you know how where you need to put your um, pinky finger when you decide to start shifting to the note that's written on the page or what we're aiming for at the moment. So, I'll show you the final result, which is... So, like that. 
So that's really useful, I think. I found I use that all the time because it's really useful. But what you always need to remember is um, on whichever string you're playing on, always remember the action of the arm moving in. So when you're on the G string, you don't have to move your elbow in as much as say maybe on the higher notes on the E string or the A string because when you play on the G string your elbow is automatically already um, a bit more in since you have to reach those notes anyway. An important thing to bear in mind is I've been asked to also talk about what our thumb, left hand thumb does while we shift which is a really good point and it's a really important point because many times people find themselves clenching their thumb so I'll just demonstrate what that would look like here so basically people either press really hard here like this or just while they're shifting their thumb is dragging them down um, so how to avoid that is even not not even just when we're shifting because we should always keep a relaxed thumb because this is the guide for the rest of our fingers so important thing to remember is our thumb should always lie sideways on the neck of the violin we should never touch the violin with our whole thumb like this 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 is not what it should look like. It should be sideways like this. If you do this, you, you're more likely to start gripping like this or being more tense. And the hand is more tense because it's less natural um, compared to the other fingers. So if we just put it on the side like so, there's less tendency to grip because you can't really press really hard if your thumb is on the side because there's nowhere to really grab. So this is already a good starting point. So when we shift, I'll demonstrate the same shift F, F sharp to F sharp octave. So, so. So as you can see, my thumb is moving with my fingers like this. Which is why it's a really good idea to practice these kind like i showed you with the vibrato exercises if you watched that video i mentioned to do this these exercises like so um on every string with every finger if you practice it if you practice that kind of shifting exercise, it's really good. So what you see there is that your finger is just sliding across the string, not pressing. And that's exactly the same action that your thumb should have. Your thumb should just be sliding in and out, like so. And I'll show you from this angle. Like so. And it should just be just brushing against it. So... Once you go to a higher position, of course, your thumb can now touch with this part on the neck of the violin. But while you're just in a normal finger position like this, it should always be sideways. So when you shift, you should just let your fingers and thumb work together and they just they guide the thumb. like so, so your thumb doesn't need to grip hard. It just needs to be brushing alongside and not pressing or doing anything. It just follows the rest of your fingers um, and moves alongside like a, train, like a train track. It literally just goes with them and then goes back. So even if you want to practice that action, it's a really good idea. And you should just always, just remember to just keep it relaxed. And you don't, don't think about use, using your thumb for anything. Because you don't, this thumb doesn't need to have a proper purpose. Just think um, that it's following and it's just following the other fingers. And then it shouldn't um, clench too much. So you shouldn't be trying to do anything with your thumb. So that's how you use that type one shifting 
for using the pivot notes and the helping the helping notes basically and that it's the same even if you're trying to shift to a third finger for example from a second finger on the E string to a third finger on the E string in same fifth position for now I actually find it useful to always use the finger that you've started on to shift instead of because when we use the it seems logical to do the same as how we did when I showed you the first the first example which was the F to the F that we used the first finger in the new position but actually I feel like if you if you're shifting from a second finger it doesn't make sense to then shift to a first finger and then try to get the new note. I think it's good to just shift on the shift on the second finger or on the finger that you've started the previous note with and go and go straight to the and go straight to the second finger in the new position. What I do anyway is instead of going straight from the second finger to the first finger and then um, what I do is I go straight from the second finger to the second finger in the new position and then make sure I know and then I play the first finger note to make sure I know that I'm in tune and that I'm in the correct position so so like that then I can do the eventual sh the shift we were aiming for which is the G sharp to the E so And those are the shifts, that's how you practice the shifts going upwards and it's also useful to do that on on the way down. So for example, if you're going from a, um, let's just do the same note, so a high E to the same finger, which is an A in first position. So. And practice it like that a few times and just go back and forth so you can practice going down and up again that's basically all I wanted to say for that first type of shift thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope you enjoyed it and remember that next week we'll have part two which is the type 2 method of shifting which is more glissando -y and um, which is more of a glissando so we'll be learning that next week because it's really important to vary your shifts. That's why we have two types of shifts because there are different shifts for different circumstances. So if you'd like to check that out, please do keep your eyes peeled and they'll be and it will be posted next Sunday for definite. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.